Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another little Travel Mole broadcast. When I say little, it's not little really, because we have got the big cheese as far as Floridian tourism is concerned. We have Dana. Good morning, Dana. Hi, Graham. Good to be back. Do you like being called the big cheese? I, it's better than some things I'm called. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dana, th uh, things go from strength to strength as far as uh, numbers are concerned. You know, you've, you're really booming. When we spoke, um, I think it was in February, you know, in, in West Palm Beach, things were good. I'm assuming that progress is still good. Yeah, I think we've, I, I could say we've gone from good to great. Um, it's pretty amazing how quickly our European markets have recovered. Um, we're at a 96% recovery rate for the UK now, which is, you know, 4% more. We're mm -hmm. almost there back to 2019 levels. So uh, given all of the difficulties with, you know, the, the exchange rate and the vaccination requirements and all of those things that are finally starting to settle out, you know, we're in a really good place. And as, it all sounds, it's all sounds good. And as you know, I, I come to Florida at least once a year, uh, sometimes twice. And it's, it's always an enjoyable experience. And it's always a, a new experience because there's so many different things to find out about it. Most people from overseas, probably only think of Tampa, Orlando, Miami, but there is so much more uh, to find out. Have you found that that drip down effect from those major um, major cities starting to take effect as well? We have. We we have started really marketing the the core of those cities, but more, more, and more is you know adventure travel, off the beaten path experiences, helping our visitors with itineraries with within one or two hours of those gateway cities. Uh, where they can easily, you know, go and see something new and unexpected without a long drive. Uh, just it, it's our job to educate our consumer on the great things that are available in Florida. So we've been leaning into that the last couple of years. Good. Um, as far as headwinds are concerned, you know, it's all very positive. But again, we spoke about things like cost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things. You know, uh, you know, I heard a quote the other day about hotel rooms in certain parts of Florida going for. Twelve hundred dollars a night, which by anybody's stretch, that's quite expensive. Yep. Uh, do you see any any movement of that coming up in the future, or do you think that's just the way it's going to be, and that Florida, in fact, probably the whole of the United States, is going to be considered by many people almost a luxury destination to visit? Well, I think you know, just coming out of the pandemic, the rates were ex extremely high. Uh, we have seen the trend downward now on hotel rates, um, pretty significantly. So I think as people, you know, are starting to book, you know, now and into the summer, they're going to find those rates moderating quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, the ADR has come down um, in in all of our markets. So I, I think you know, we, there's nothing we can do about the exchange rate, but there is a lot we can do. Uh, with hotel rates and so forth and Airbnbs or vacation rentals. Um, so those rates are coming down. We see, we've seen it every week. Good. And then going forward, you know, we, you're obviously now be thinking about 2024 and mm -hmm. will there be any many sort of key pillars of your marketing strategy you're going to be talking about? I know uh, food has been a big thing over the last couple of years. I presume you're going to still focus on that, but also wildlife, birding, all sorts of things like that. What are going to be the main focuses? Well, you you could do my job for me at this point, Graham, because you know <laughs> you know so much of what we're up to. But obviously, yeah, adventure travel all over Florida is that off the beaten path um, experience. You know all the great things you can do in the outdoors, and we continue to uh, to work on that. Culinary. Now that we have Michelin uh, two years into the state, we have nineteen Michelin star restaurants in Orlando, Miami, and Tampa. Uh, but we are also uh, marketing culinary throughout the state uh, through a lot of our video shorts and just a lot of different types of marketing. Um, accessible travel is still very important uh, to us and we continue to expand um, the offerings that we have for accessibility. And then um, we, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, Brightline, Brightline. Yes, Brightline, uh, the, the high-speed rail out of Miami is officially now opening their Miami to Orlando route. Um, they are selling tickets for travel starting September 1st. So that is just a game changer because there are so many direct flights into Orlando uh, and Miami from the UK that it provides an opportunity to fly in and out of a different city uh, for travelers and see something new. Uh, and then that will eventually within the next few years be expanded to include Tampa as well. Okay. We are, I was lucky enough to travel on 
uh, on the Bright Line in uh, February up to uh, West Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. and it's a very pleasant experience, actually, and uh, makes a change from uh, having to duel with other drivers on I-95 all the way up there. So that was it was very pleasant. Um, it would be remiss of me as a news organization not to ask you about the statement from N. AACP uh, putting their travel advisory out on Florida. What What's your feelings and what's your sentiment on that one? Uh, you know, this was a situation where a political organization put forth a statement that was full of factual misrepresentations. It was clearly designed to scare travelers. And, you know, the, the saddest part of it is that the people that would t potentially be hurt by something like that are the hardworking hospitality professionals in Florida that depend on tourism to uh, care for themselves and their families. You know, these are the people that are hurt. And I would add that Florida has more African-American owned businesses than any other state in the country. And so, you know, with so many black owned businesses, you know, they are going to be hurt by something that is really just a political stunt. Um, there seems to be a lot of pushback now, or there is actually a lot of pushback now from a lot of our uh, black travel and tourism groups like the Black Meeting Planners Association. I'm not sure if that's exact title, but uh, and other uh, oh. black tour operator groups throughout the state, which have issued statements uh, opposing this because the the uh, impacts are uh, largely to the African-American community that they are purporting to try and protect. It's just, it was a really, really bad move. And it's unfortunate that they would uh, try and score political points with something so factually misleading. Okay. Well, it's obviously things are going very well, apart from, apart from the NAACP statement, but things are going very well. You've been in the job some time now. You know, your feet are well under the table. How, how do you feel about your, your, your tenure? Do you feel comfortable in, in the travel and tourism world now? Well, I do. I've been in this position for about four and a half years and continue to learn every day. But I'm just so proud of the work that we do in Florida. You know, we are just an incredible, diverse, welcoming state to everyone. We have so much to offer. And, you know, I, every day I wake up and, you know, learn something new about the state that I've called home. Um, sixth generation Floridian, and I still find new amazing experiences in Florida every day. So to get to talk about that and, and have that be my job, I really do think I have the best job uh, in the state of Florida. It's the dream job, girl. Yep. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.